Welcome to the Make Your Mark podcast. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Moyer, author of Win Again, speaker, career coach, and business advisor. And I help athletes, executives, and entrepreneurs reach their fullest potential. What you're going to be hearing in every single episode are conversations with athletes and other sports-related influencers. And we'll be offering you the insight that you need to succeed in life, including advice that will let you jump past your competition, whether it be for a great new job or taking your business to a much, much higher level. Make sure to connect with me on social media at Mark Moyer Coach and go to my website, markmoyer.com, to get access to the tips and strategies that my coaching clients get directly. If you're looking for ways to make your mark, send me an email to mark at markmoyer.com and I'll get you going right away. Thanks for joining me today. It's going to be an awesome episode. Now, are you ready to make your mark? Let's do this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Make Your Mark podcast. I'm broadcasting live from podcast headquarters here in New York City, and I hope all is great wherever you're listening, whether it's here in the United States, in Canada, Mexico, England, Zimbabwe, any other country on the planet, thrilled to have you on board. I'm in a super mood as I just had an amazing conversation with Garrick Jones. And Garrick is one of these guys that he's, you know, the word visionary kind of gets thrown around a lot, but he's one of these guys that, I mean, he really, he brings what he talks about to the table. He's the commissioner of the SDFL, the state's developmental football league, and This is a guy who's seen how important it is to prepare players, professional athletes, for the game after they retire, for their careers and their lives. And, you know, he's just a great guy, funny guy, nice guy, and he he truly cares about everybody that he touches. It's really a, a super interview, a super podcast. We cover a ton of ground. We both share advice. We both share insights. Um, But this is somebody who you can really learn from and admire, and you're going to hear a lot more about Garrick and the SDFL. And wait till the very end. You're going to hear the episodes hit your mark segment. It's it's pretty funny. Rapid fire questions that I've thrown at Garrick, and he's uh, wait till you hear what he's done with them. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, check out this podcast on iTunes, leave a review, subscribe, get involved, send me a note if you want to mark at markmoyer.com. Go to the website, markmoyer.com. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. So let's get things rolling with Garrick Jones and happy listening. Garrick Jones, it's a pleasure and honor to have you on. I, and I feel like we've spoken a lot before already. <laughs> but um, right, right. what I want to jump in is Gar- Garrick is like, uh, you know, it's one of these guys that you're going to hear over the next, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes is a guy that's not only incredibly accomplished, but he's just motivated. He's got a lot of energy behind him, but he's got a great vision and he's got one of the best, um, maybe even investment opportunities, but I'm not an investment advisor. So do not take advice from me about that, about that. Anyway, Garrett, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me on the Make Your Mark podcast. Pleasure to be here. Cool. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, I think the most important thing to talk about is for you to tell me a little bit more about the you know, what you're doing now. You're commissioner of the okay. state's football league and where you want to take it. So tell me about the, state, the SDFL and what it stands for and where you're looking to take it. Well, the SDFL stands for the state's developmental football league in, in which uh, we focus primarily on the life after the lights. Uh, where we are teaching our athletes how to uh, uh, be in a position to take care of their families, you know, learning about finances, learning about business, personal development, personal growth, uh, family dynamics, you know, being able to just be pillars of the community uh, because so many times that gets, you know, uh, really not looked at, you know, that that's one of the things that kind of slips through the cracks, you know, in the professional football realm or professional sports in general, um, it's really not one of the more attractive features for the athletes because a lot of times these leagues aren't making any money off of it. So right. they don't really focus on it. So our deal is to, is to focus on those things and give these guys the opportunity to play the game, knowing that, you know, less than 1% of all athletes are going to make it. So we want to make sure that that 100% of these athletes that have bills, babies, and problems are being taken care of. 
Bills, babies, and problems. Wow, that sounds like a that sounds like a, an old like Motown group or something. Uh, <laughs> right. I don't know what the hell right. I just said. Anyway, but look, that's that's an amazing uh, sort of thing. But so tell me a little bit more about. Let's say I've um, I've tried out for the Giants, and uh, you know I didn't make the the roster, and I'm I'm right. kind of wondering what am I going to do next? You know, I got to tell my family right. I didn't make it. I I um, right. I'm struggling to make ends meet. You know, I'm not. You know, and then I see your profile, your website and everything. And I reach out to you. What, what happens next? Like how, how does the process go? Well, from there, uh, we have regional tryouts in which these guys can be a part of, uh, okay. well before they even come try out, you know, we, we will have a personality indicator tests these guys can take that will help us understand what type of person they are before we even get a chance to, to lay oh. eyes on them physically. Well, that's uh, and interesting. that helps like, us. Well, how does that, so how does that work? The personal, I mean, you know, tell me about that. Well, well, it's a company that we deal with uh, that's one of our sponsors, uh, Equilibria. They have uh, okay. Equilibria in sports in which what we do is everybody that's associated with the SDFL will take a personality indicator test and it okay. will give us their ego. From there, we understand how to deal with these type of people, you know, whether their colors are, are yellow over red or red over yellow or, or, or green over blue, those types of things. That gives us an opportunity to understand them a bit more before we even talk with them. Um, it's just like the players, the players are going to have the stickers on their helmets and these coaches are going to understand what type of players they are because, uh, red over yellow, you can give them a couple of words and that they're, they're off to the races oh, as really? opposed to a green. Yeah. As opposed to a green over blue, that's going to, going to have to pull them to the side a little bit, give them more information and, and, and really let them know what it is that you expect from them for them to be as successful as another, another color. Uh, so it makes everything more intentional, and, 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 it, and it's something that we use and utilize in order for us to know what type of person and what type of people that we're dealing with. Uh, so it, it, it streamlines communication across the board. Now, uh, I think that's, that's really cool. Now, is that something that the NFL tries using now or not really? They're nah, kind of like, nah. they're kind of like everybody's just green over green, <laughs> whatever. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Everybody just lump, lump them in there and let's rock and roll. It's all for yeah, green. Now that's, yeah, and, it, and those are some of the things that I, I, I witnessed while I was playing. I said okay. if I ever had the opportunity to put something together, we wanted to do something like that. So that's just one of the many programs that there's a business opportunity tied to it in which these athletes and their families can make money, uh, but at the same time uh, learn how to deal with each other. And that's, oh, that's what we don't necessarily get. That's great. So, you know, I know we've spoken about this in the past, but, you know, tell me a little bit about how – you know, I guess it was seven years back in 2011, 2012, when you said, well, now it's time I'm going to launch this thing and I'm going to grow it. Right. And I'm sure it's just taken hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours to, I mean, thousands of hours to get this to where you are now. Right. I mean, incredible work and sweat and blood and tears and everything. Right. But now you're, you're just about there, you know, where you're on the cusp of all this. I mean, you've got, you know, you got four franchises, four teams, and I, I think you want to grow it. But tell me about the growth. Uh, where do you want to take it? Well, the growth, uh, realistically, we want to be in every city. Uh, not every city, but every state. Okay. Uh, we want to have two teams per state. Um, you know, barring uh, Hawaii and Alaska just for travel logistics and what we're doing as a, as a league, uh, we'll add four teams in California and four teams in Texas. But that'll give us, ultimately, the grand scheme of things, we'll have 100 teams in which um, that'll give us an opportunity for these teams in these states to have two teams per state okay. in, in which they'll play each other for the opportunity to represent their particular state in the SDFL playoffs. So that's where the states come from. Uh, it's, it's, it's given us an opportunity for these guys to really have a lot of pride in their states and want to compete, you know, in the SDFL bowl. So we'll have a true playoff scenario, you know, like our college goes back and forth in the NFL. We want to be able to touch it from all angles, you know, and, and, that, and that's the end game from the U.S. You know? Wow. And but as you said, this is a, could be global, right? I mean, there could be teams in, in England, China, Japan, wherever, right? Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to touch. The thing about it is there's many players that are trying to get to the NFL, but right. everybody can go. So we want to give all of these guys an opportunity to be able to play because just to come to the States and play is their Super Bowl. Uh, but unfortunately, they won't have that opportunity, you know, with some of the leagues that are here. But uh, we're about developing the athlete, no matter where they come from, uh, no matter, you know, what nationality, those types of things. We want to develop them 
as opposed to just going and getting the money from those areas and then leaving. You know, it's unfortunate that, you know, a lot of those things happen with, you know, these major leagues. Right. Uh, but for us, we to develop the people and give them an opportunity to be able to take care of their families right where they are and, and have fun and play ball at the same time. Now, I, you know, I think you'd mentioned before that, 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 that it's not just – growing this league within football, but there's, there's other sports, right? I mean, you can grow this internationally in rugby and in anything, right? Every sport uh, with the way we have it set up can benefit from what we're doing and not only just sports, just business in general. Uh, you know, if you're a business owner and you're wanting to have auxiliary revenue streams of, of, of income and revenue coming in, uh, this is the platform that we set up. So it's a head protection you know, for what we're doing to make sure we're going to be around. Um, you know, if if we just banked on people coming to the games, we wouldn't be around too long. Uh, we know that because we're a developmental situation, people will come, but we want to have this thing where these, these fans are, are, are organically built uh, and we build that following, but we want to have other revenue streams coming in year round. So that gives us an opportunity to be around uh, and be a funnel system for, uh, you know, all of these different athletes that are trying to get to the NFL that can't play. Everybody can't go to the CFL. Everybody can't play in the AFL. You know, we get it. But there are more athletes than there are leagues. So what we wanted to do is just be here for them and give them the opportunity to learn and learn business and financials, financial literacy and investments, have life insurance, everything that they need. And, and those are the things that get scammed over with all these other leagues. Now, if, look, there's uh, obviously, I mean, not every player that plays for Alabama, Notre Dame, can, you know, et cetera, can, can make it into – into the pros, right? Now, are you able to do, build this into some sort of, um, whether it's a college recruiting effort, can you go to the schools and say, look, you know, hey, we'd love to, you know, whoever doesn't make it, send them to us, or how does that work? Right. I mean, that's basically the conversation. You know, unfortunately, with all of these schools, and it is, it's something that, just to touch on that, when you talk with these coaches, they know that all of their kids aren't going. Maybe two or three of their kids will get the opportunity. And right. that's every year, if that. So, you know, for us to be here and to say, listen, we want to continue what you're trying to instill in these guys uh, in regards to growth, you know, being men uh, and understanding the family dynamic and just being, you know, good people in general. Um, that's the conversation that we have with these schools, whether they be D3, junior colleges or these majors. Um, you know, we're here for them because all of those guys aren't going, you know, and that's the thing. And I'm, we get a couple of uh, spring games and spring practices and, and it's eye opening to see so many guys out there and say, hey, probably maybe one or two of these guys will go. And that's the that's the reality of it. Well, it really is. And and, you know, what's really important is that you're instilling, I think, um, really hope and confidence and, and so much more in these kids that that aren't going to make it or they may not, or they may be able to make it some point, but they're not making it now. And you're, you're offering them the ability to not only learn the sport, but more importantly, life skills. And, and as you said, financial and, and, you know, there was a, just a quick shout out to a, a fellow. I went, I graduated from a small school up in the, uh, in New York state, Colgate, Colgate university. And okay. at Colgate, we had a, um, we had a basketball player, Donald Foyle, who uh, a few years younger than me, but he wrote uh, an amazing book, uh, called winning the money game. And in that book, it's all about, um, you know, he talks about, you not just uh, if you're a basketball player, what to do with your money. He's got two separate guys. And he, what he does is he kind of compares two separate players and one guy blows all his money on the, the, the swag and the cars and the girls and this and that, and the other guy's responsible and how much money they have at the end of the thing. But I think that's a lot of what you guys are teaching, right? It's, it's just, you know, Absolutely. how to be smart. You know how to, and not you don't need to be a genius smart or a you know a book smart right. person, but how to be common sense smart, right? And, and that's yeah, it. and that's it. I mean, we we teach from testimony. You know, all of the downfalls, all of the pitfalls that guys go through. I mean, we've been through them. You know, and that's kind of what our deal is. Um, that's what we teach from. You know, whether it be divorce, bankruptcies, foreclosures, all of those different things, we get a chance to make that our our actual curriculum. And which we're, we're teaching these guys. So, you know, I'm a firm believer in if I've never been there before, it's going to be hard for me to teach you and show you how to go the right direction. So that's what we wanted to be, just points of reference. You know, have guys who, who have been there, done that, wrote a book a couple of times and, and really give them the practical knowledge and just that common sense that you can make it happen. 
You know, you can be successful in all those different things. You can pursue this dream, but then the event that you do not make it, now you're in a position where you can actually be in an ownership, you know, and have that ownership mentality. So we're basically creating uh, uh, check writers instead of check chasers. And that's what this oh, thing is. Oh, I like about. that. I like that. Well, you know, it's funny, and I, I don't want to tick off all the colleges and universities out there, but honestly, you know, Garrick, I, uh, I, I'm trying to look back at, uh, you know, I graduated kind of a long time ago, but look, man, do I remember calculus or geology or whatever? No, but, uh, I would, I would have remembered, I hate to say this, but I mean, I probably would remember everything you'd be teaching me if I was in the SDFL because that's, that's real world stuff, right? That's, that's, uh, that's life. And that's what we need. Uh, and I mean, it's and that's what this thing is about. You know, we're about um, we are about having this thing set up to where uh, these are things that you can use in real life. You know, things that are practical, things that you can apply right then and there. Uh, and it makes you really, really look at yourself and, 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 and learn how to be intentional about everything that you do every day. And understand that you know it's about a mentality. You know you're gonna have pitfalls. You're gonna have so it's a roller coaster. I've yet to be on a roller coaster that did not go down or did not go up. Uh, and, and if I did, that would be a terrible roller coaster. So <laughs> life, that's crazy. It's life, man, and that's what we—that's what we teach from, man. We just teach from the testimonies, give these guys yeah. the, the things they need in order for them to be successful and take care of their families for life, and um, and, and we just go from there. And we we allow them to play football, and then we we develop them and develop their talents, and give them the opportunity to be seen. And and if it's in their DNA to go to the NFL, they'll go. But if not, they can put their money with, uh, you know, four or five guys from the SDFL and they can go out and buy some of these teams that they get cut from. And that's, that's the mentality. That's, inc that's incredible. And, you know, it's interesting. You know, I when I hear all about what, you, what you're what you doing, I, I kind of want to, you know, hang up the phone with you and then just start calling people I know and tell them about this because it's um, it's exciting because it's not just – you know, a new football league and so forth, but it's, it's what you're doing right. and the mission and all that. Right. And so to Absolutely. me, it's, um, you know, you know, so tell me a little bit about how, you know, we, we've, we've talked about this in the past, but tell me a little bit about the marketing and how you go about getting the word out. Because look, at the end of the day, it's, yes, part of it's about bringing money in, I guess, money and investment, but, right. but, but it's also about the exposure and getting more people hearing about it saying, wow, you know what, we'd love to, whether it's sponsor or give you enough money to start a team in Baltimore and in New Orleans and right. whatever, right? So how do you, how are you going about getting that out? Okay, well, everything we do is organic. Uh, it's about teaching these athletes how to leverage and, and, and for them to understand that they're influencers and that they have a level of influence. So it, 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 with the way we do it, you know, we teach them how to monetize these things in such a way to where they're going to be able to go out and sell various products, even the jerseys, uh, you know, through the vendor sports, even the uniforms that are on their backs is something commissionable about that. So these guys are able to leverage the fact that they have people that follow them. Uh, and what that does for us as a league, it gives us more teeth in regards to advertising and marketing. Uh, these guys will be marketing our sponsors and various uh, strategic partners on their actual social media platforms, which gives us more teeth. It's more organic uh, and it's, it's more fluid. You know, it's not just a subliminal, you know, OK, you, you got these radio ads pumping all day, all day, all day. But people come to the game and they don't really know what for. Uh, we need them to understand and have a connection with these athletes. So it's kind of like the, the math equation that I throw out for a lot of people. With eight teams in the SDFL, we have 500 people in the SDFL. Each one of those 500 people have five people in a direct line of communication each and every day. And these are people that we're teaching all of these leveraging skills and those types of things. What we do from there is we multiply that five times that 500. That gives you 2,500 people. Now, those 2,500 people have at least 500 people in their social media platforms in which now – if you multiply those at 500 times, that 2,500 will give you 1.25 million organic people that are either your 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 actual clients, potential fans, potential uh, people that you can actually touch. You can taste, you can smell, you can do all of those different things, and they understand your product. They understand what it is that we're doing as a league, and now they have something to come to the games for because now they can be a part of the profits and the profit sharing and anything that we have that makes residual income for them as well as the league. 
So instead of just coming to the game and spending all of your money to get away from reality and you go home and you can't pay bills, now you can come, you can have a great experience, and you can go home and now you can actually begin to to really seriously look at walking away from that nine to five just from coming to the SDFL and being a part of what we're doing. So it's a simple equation, man. Perfect. And, you know, more and more now we hear uh, how critical it is or how, you know, how good it is to have, whether it's residual income or subscri- subscription, subscription, yeah subscription-based income, that sort of thing where every month you've got something coming in that, yes, you've worked hard for, but now it comes in automatically. It's almost like a salary, but a separate salary, right? It's, it's separate. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. You know, it's, I, you know, it's interesting. And, and look, I encourage everybody to, to reach out to you and to the league about how some of those opportunities present themselves because it's, uh, it's really, it's, it's uh, you know, you're doing such a great thing but it's actually okay to do a great thing and make money doing a great thing. It's not a bad thing, right? It's good, right? Not at all. Not at all. Not a, especially if everybody can benefit from it. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing. You know, a lot of times with the NFL, uh, you know, when I played, I got paid every two weeks. I got, play, I got paid well, but I didn't get paid what I was worth. You know, I didn't get a chance to touch any concession money. I didn't get a chance to touch any of the parking, any of the merchandising, and, and definitely not the ticket sales. And I don't have anything residually coming to me right now outside of bad backs and concussions and broken bones. That's it. Yeah, and those are um, not good things, I'm pretty sure. Nah, no, nah, right. nah, nah. So that's what we wanted to, to, to just even the playing field across the board for everybody. Everybody gets an opportunity to, you know, be a part of this deal, have a vested interest in it, uh, understand the dynamics of what's going on with the league and, 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 and feel like they're a part of the deal. You're no longer a number when you're dealing with the SDFL, you know, longer just, you know, uh, a couple of dollars here and a couple of dollars there. You know, we, we want this thing to be family oriented. Uh, we want everybody to be able to, to, to take care of their families with the product that is on the field and what we're doing as we grow, uh, because you guys are a part of the deal and that's what it's about. Now, do you, um, do you feel that it's important to have, um, any sort of, I don't want to say celebrity backing, but if you had some, I don't know, not Eli Manning, but some like big names behind you, or is that, not, that's probably not really needed, is it? What do you think? No, not necessarily, uh, but it, it's welcome. Uh, like I say, you know, when we talked earlier, you know, uh, just to have Hall of Famers behind it, you know, like Earl Campbell, you know, and a couple other guys, they, they reached out and said, hey, man, keep going. We love it. We love the direction that you're headed. You know, that gives you the validation, those types of things, but Everything that we do is is based off of the volume of athletes that are trying to to to, to make it to the NFL. You know, there's over sixteen thousand guys each year that are draft eligible. Everybody's not going. You know, so ultimately we want to have this thing set up to where if you're not making it to the NFL, you you have a home, we're a destination, and that's what this thing is about. You know, so that's uh that's that's really what what this thing is set on. It's for the families of these athletes to, to benefit from as well as the fans. So this is more of a community effort. You know, there's not the big names. They're cool. But a lot of times you got to pay for those big names. And yeah, if people don't right. come to the games, that's what's happening with a lot of these leagues. They got to shut down because they got all these big names, but no butts in the seats. And that's not what we're about. That's not what we're about at all. No, that's, that's, that's great because, uh, you know, I think some of the some of the players, uh, former players and so on that I know, I, I think that, yes, uh, you know, some of them might ask for money to be compensated for that. But I think a lot of them, right. a lot of them, though, you know what? A lot of them, I think, would have to think, Jesus, this is, this is such a good thing that you're doing and it's going to be helping. I mean, look, a lot of guys that played when you played and even more recently, they've gone through this stuff. They've gone through injury. They've gone through sort of, as you said, the roller coaster that definitely went maybe more down than it did up or more up than down. I don't know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And, and I think that, uh, they, they want to be able to support something that's really helping out the future players and future generations and so on. Um, I think that's great. Now, uh, in terms of, you know, you know, we talked about this also earlier, but your day to day, I mean, you said it's a lot of phone calls and so on, but who, who are some of the people you're speaking to? Like what, what kind of, you know, we're talking, we're talking with, uh, CEOs of companies, uh, various potential investors, uh, different uh, organizations that want to partner with us, uh, you know, coaches, it's, you name it. I mean, anytime you're an entrepreneur, you're doing all of the jobs, you know, and that's that's basically how it works uh, because you want to know the, the type of workload before you start bringing people in to replace you. 
uh, in order to grow the business. And that's where we are. We're growing this thing. You know, we've been around for, you know, six years or so now, you know, uh, taking our time because uh, we're not we're not under anybody's thumb. We're not, you know, our timetable is our timetable. We're going to make sure that the product is right and those types of things. But but we talk to everybody. I mean, I just yesterday I'm sitting in a, you know, in a, in a uh, international house of pancakes uh, talking with a bunch of the guys that came out and tried out uh, yesterday. I'm talking to their parents and basically breaking down the whole scenario. So, I mean, you name it. We are in a position where we're going to change the lives of a lot of young men and women. Um, and we're going to change the lives of a lot of their families and these fans as well. So uh, it's it's up to us to make sure that everybody understands what's going on and those things. So it, it doesn't matter, man. It's social media, CEOs, billion-dollar companies, corporations. Every day is, is a new day. <laughs> and it's yeah. a lot of conversation. Yeah. I uh... – I guess, I don't know if I should say this or not, but my respect for you just went up this much. Do you know why? Because you had a, meeting, you had a meeting at an IHOP. I you love IHOP, man. I love <laughs> IHOP. Oh my God. It's like, that's like my, like, you right. know, if I had to spend the rest of my life in a building, it'd probably be that. I don't know. Uh, uh, right. So good one. I'm, I'm impressed. All right. There now, um, now speaking of, speaking of uh, the rest of your life and so forth, you know, I, I guess what I want to, I want to talk to you about sort of, where this is going to be growing and so on, it's going to be, you know, expanding, expanding. You're going to be needing to add people, hire people and that sort of thing. What kind of, you know, what kind of person would you like, who are the right teammates for the SDFL? Oh, for the SDFL, it's, it's guys who've been there, done that. Uh, it's guys who have some, some, some life lessons and they can teach from that testimony, the things that they've gone through, the things that, you know, happen in their lives and those types of things. Um, those are the people that we want. We want to have guys that have been around in business. It doesn't necessarily have to be sports, uh, but business and just, you know, have, have, have a wealth of knowledge to just give these athletes because that's, you know, what we want to have for these guys. We want to have their families in a position where they're learning, you know, and this is, this is our curriculum. This is what we do each and every day. And this is what we want to have. Uh, we want to have those guys that, that have the information and, and it makes it easier for these guys to look and say, okay, they've been there, done that. And then that's what we try to do. Just try to make sure we find the right fits. And, and from there, we, we make that history. That's, that's great. Well, look, I'm going to do my, uh, my little segment that we talked about uh, uh, at the start. And I didn't want to ruin any surprises, but it's called Hit Your Mark. It's uh, going to be a few questions that I'm going to throw at you. And you're going to have to, uh, you're going to, have to uh, tackle them as best as you can. But you've done this I before. This is easy peasy. All right. Well, I'm good. You ready? So I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Over the course of your career in football, you've done a lot of different things. You've, you've met a lot of people. Um, but who do you think has been the funniest person you've ever spoken to and met? I probably would have to say, man, oh, it's a ton of funny guys, man. You got to understand, man, I've been on eight professional teams, man. So it's a lot. Um, <laughs> Oh, man. I'll probably have to say maybe the funniest would be Milford Brown. Um, he was with me with the Texans, and he went to uh, Arizona after that. So he was a really funny guy, man, a guy from Alabama. Uh, had a lot of jokes. He was in the O-line room with me. So, you know, like I say, that whole O-line aspect, man, it's a lot of characters, man. Maybe Gary Walker. You know, he started out in Jacksonville when they expanded out there with the Jags and he was at in, in Houston with me. So and a lot of those guys were super funny, man. Super funny. Well, and now, now I know, uh, I mean, you're, you seem to like, you could be a funny guy. Are you a funny guy or not really? Yeah, no, I, I, I can hold my own if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, so tell me about, uh, one of the, one of the craziest pranks you've been involved with, um, whether it's happening to you or you did it to somebody. Okay. Well, um, Probably by far the funniest or the craziest when we had a had a group of rookies come in. I think I was third year myself, uh, and then the rooks are supposed to hold your pads and take your stuff from you know training camp and all those different things. And he decided he didn't want to. So uh, after a couple of times of discussion, you know, he decided that he was done and camp wasn't over yet. So we just took everything he had, helmet, shoulder pads, cleats, and all those different things, man, and just. And politely froze them in a block of ice, and uh, oh, and just and let, let him just uh, let let that stuff thaw out, man. And took him a couple of practices to miss and a couple of fines, but he eventually got his stuff because the equipment managers wouldn't give him anything new. So 
we had to we had to make sure you understood what was going oh, on. Like, it's God, just part of it, I'm gonna try that someday. You know, I still play. Uh, <laughs> even though I'm a, a senior citizen, I still play. I play ice hockey here in New York City, oh, and okay. uh, I would love to do that to somebody. I think that's an amazing idea. I gotta find a giant. Hey. Freezer. You gotta pay. You gotta pay your dues, man. You gotta pay your dues. <laughs> no kidding. Um, all right. So, look, everybody asks, or maybe sometimes people ask, you know, who are the three people you would have a drink with, or lunch with, or dinner with, or whatever it is. And a lot of people they throw out the easy names like Warren Buffett or Bill Gates or Martin Luther right. King. So, <laughs> give me three other people that you would have a drink with. Right. If it wasn't them. Uh, three other people. Three other people. Jimi Hendrix. Oh, awesome. Um, I'd like to sit down with Bob Marley. And then I would like to sit with Elvis. Whoa. Yes. Now right. that is cool. All right. All right. And of course, you could have picked at least one guy that was living. What the heck? You're going like, to be like, uh, Jimmy, you don't look so good right now. <laughs> well, you know, it's been, it's been a while. Well, I mean, alive or living. I mean, I'd like to, you know, just sit down and kind of, and just, just pick those guys' brain or just, you know, just listen. Because a lot of times you, you learn more by just listening, you know. People that normally tell you everything they everything you need to know by just listening to them, you know. So that that's what that's how that would be. Well, people always say we got one mouth and two ears, right? You know, that's the yeah, yeah, do the math, do the math, man. <laughs> All right. Um, now, looking back through through the years and stuff, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, you know what is you know one of the proudest moments you've had. I mean, whether it's tied in with the SDFL or even before that? What, you know, tell me about that. Um, well, proudest moment for myself was uh, being able to present this business platform uh, in, in Babson uh, College out in Wellesley, Massachusetts uh, last summer. Had the opportunity to go there and, uh, and really let them know exactly what this thing was about uh, through the NFLPA's program where, you know, we were growing our businesses and those types of things. And it was myself and 11 other guys that were former players. Uh, so everybody had their business platforms. Uh, it was lobsters, wine, insurance, and, and then you had the SDFL. So, you know, everybody got a chance to pitch by the, end, by the time we were done with all the classes, all the days we were there. And everybody had two of their peers as well as two of the professors. By the time they got down to mine, I had, you know, close to 10, 11 uh, of the uh, professors. I uh, had all of my peers and my five minutes went to 30 uh, and got a chance to answer the questions and talk to those guys. And, and of course, when we were done, you know, with the questions, they everybody was trying to find the chinks in the armor and they really couldn't because this thing here that we have, the SDFL, is all about solutions to all the different problems. And they asked me, you know, flat out, how big do we want this thing to get? And I said, well, in, in, in layman's terms, we can, we can actually purchase the NFL. And they, they said, wow. hey, listen, we, we like and we love that answer because that's what we wanted to hear. Because we don't get excited about business because we've acquired billion dollar companies. We've taught, you know, years and years of entrepreneurial classes, those types. So they've seen it all until right. we got a chance to bring that to the table. And, and and I told them, you know, before I left, once we get the budgets together, I just need five of you guys to be a part of this deal. And they said, you just let us know, you know, and to this day, you know, I have business mentors there now, you know, and they call me and check on me and, you know, make sure everything's going well. And and then I think that's that's a proud moment because we've taken the time out to do this thing the right way, you know, so we, we're going to be around. That's We're going to be around. Well, speaking of that, uh, so the in terms of the legacy, what you want to leave behind for people, I mean, you know, it's it's already, I mean, the SDFL itself is already, I mean, you're already solidifying that legacy, right? But tell me a little bit more about, like, specifically, what do you, what do you, what, when people think about you, what do you want them to think about? Oh, man, I just want them to think about uh, a group of individuals, not only just myself, because I have a group of individuals that have bought into this to this platform. You know, they bought into the vision. Um, uh, they want to. They'll see a group of individuals who really got it, who really understood that. You know, with the number of athletes that are coming out and the number of athletes that are retiring, um, a lot of guys aren't good. You know, whether it be the concussion deal, uh, whether it be marriages falling apart, whether it be the finances we're not doing well, you know? Right. So um, I think with the fact that there's so many guys that are playing ball, trying to get to the NFL and now these guys having support systems and families, 
Uh, I, I want people to just look at this deal as, as, as something more than just football uh, because it really is bigger than the game. It's, it's really about, you know, finding solutions to all of these different problems. So I, I, the legacy is just they see that it's a solution-based league and that it's something that's just not, you know, the game on the field. You know, it's, it's about the game of life and life after the lights. And that's what this deal is all together, you know. Uh, so that's amazing. And, you know, what I like to talk about all the time is, you know, my guests are always people that are making their mark. They're making a significant impact. And I mean, look, man, you're touching so many people, but it's, as we said earlier, I mean, it's the tip of the iceberg, right? You're just, you're going to be hopefully touching hundreds of thousands, if not more of people, not just the players, but their families, their descendants. It's all about Yes, sir. You know, carrying yeah, on. Yeah. And, and I love it, man. It's, you, you've been an amazing guest and you're somebody that, you know, I'm hoping more and more people reach out to you, whether it's directly through your social media, et cetera, and really listen to what you have in mind and what your vision is, because it's not just another league or not just another way that people will make money. I mean, it's got a right. It's got a great purpose behind it. Right. 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 That's, and that's what it's here. about. Yeah. 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 We're going to make money. We're going to change even more lives. And that's what this thing is about. That's, that's the end. Uh, Garrick, that's amazing. And listen, I really appreciate the time you've shared with me today. It's, uh, it's been, Absolutely. it's been, it, look, and, and I think the listeners will want to know much more about you and the league. Uh, you know, how, just real quick, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you and find out more about the league? Oh, they can go to www.officialsdfl.net or they can search out the hashtag SDFL Reloaded or they can just send us an email at info at officialsdfl.net and we'll get to you as quickly as possible. Oh, that's awesome. And, and you can also find out much more about, um, about my, my podcast. Oh my God. I don't even want to talk about my podcast, but the making my podcast with you being as a guest, but also more importantly, you know, find out, I'm going to have more info about you and your league on my site as well. Uh, cool. It's been amazing Thanks. talking to you, Garrick. You're a great guy. You're a funny guy, nice guy, but you're impacting tons and tons of people. And I, I, I'm thrilled to have had you on here. And again, thanks so much. And listen, have a great, not just the rest of the day and week and so forth, but all, you know, all the best success to you because, uh, you know, I think it's a deserving, uh, you know, a deserving thing that you're doing. And, and uh, I look forward to seeing you grow and it grow. Amen. Thank you, man. I, I look forward to working with you in the future, man. I look forward to it. Can't I'm, wait. I'm here for you, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, listen, have a great rest of your day. All right, brother. Thank you, man. All right. Cheers. Thanks so much for joining us today on this episode of Make Your Mark Podcast. The goal of the podcast is to help you find ways to make your mark, to succeed in life, and to jump past your competition. Be sure to leave me a review on iTunes and Stitcher and subscribe to be the first to hear new episodes. If you're looking for ways to make your mark, send me an email, mark at markmoyer.com, and I'll get back to you right away. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.